How many of y'all thought she was going to preach this morning? Uh, every one of y'all were like, oh, man, look at this. I see it. <laughs> I'm going to tell you now, it's coming. She's going to be preaching soon. Uh, the woman knows how to throw down in the pulpit, too. I'm going to let y'all know that. She, uh, there's a lot of wisdom standing right there, and there's a lot of these women in this church that can teach a lot of us e others in this church a whole lot of stuff. Amen. Every husband in this place better say amen right now. Um, wanted to let y'all know, Pastor called me this morning and asked if next Sunday after service, everyone, not just two or three people, he wants to meet with everyone uh, for a brief moment after service to discuss the Christmas banquet. Um, we do have service tonight. I want to make sure everybody remembers that. Um, after tonight's service, we will be having a practice for the drama that is going to be held at WOW Women's Conference. Um, if you can make it, please make arrangements to be here. Um, tonight's going to be very unique because um, the extra stuff that's going to happen is going to happen tonight. Not getting too much into that. And then um, the last thing Candy put down on my announcements was Thanksgiving baskets. Um, the youth and uh, a few others in the church, um, our food pantry pretty much is going to be giving away food baskets to some needy families. And uh, we're going to have a form out there next week that you will fill out if you know of a needy family. Fill it out for us and put it in the offering plate for us. Um, we don't want to embarrass nobody. We don't want to make anybody think they're less than or anything like that. We want to bless people. Amen. So we're not going to put a list out there, put in people's name. No, we're going to turn it in, and we're going we're gonna to keep it as private as possible because it's not a pride thing, but it's we want to bless something. Amen? Y'all going to have to get a whole lot louder than that if y'all want me to hurry up and get done with this message today. I'm just going to tell you that now. Oh, two hours, three hours? Okay, I'm fine with that. If y'all if y'all want me to last that long, I will. <laughs> no, today, uh, today I, I, I got a good message. Um, it's something I'm really excited about. Pastor called me... Uh, Thursday and asked, hey, is there any way you can preach Sunday? And I was like, yeah, I can if you need me to. And it's something that I've been actually sitting on for a little while that uh, I, I've talked something off of the second part of this message, but this is the first part. Um, pray with me that uh, it don't go too fast because I get excited about these kind of messages and I speed through them. And I don't want to speed through. I want to make sure that I hit every point like we should. But before we do anything, can we go to the Lord in prayer real quick? Is that okay with everybody? Y'all have got to talk. <laughs> I'm telling you, like I'm, I, I truly am. I know Pastor says it all the time. I'm a holler back. Pre I truly am one of those holler back preachers. If you don't holler back at me, I'm just gonna sit here and think I'm doing a bad job, and I'm gonna keep on staying on what I'm on until somebody gets the point. Amen. Hey, I think it's y'all. Y'all are learning. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for everything that you've already done this morning. God, I thank you, Lord, for your presence being in this place. I ask you, Lord, right now that you would just touch this word, God. Let it be arrows to our hearts, God. Let it pierce our hearts and allow us to hear what you want us to hear. Let us take what you want us to take from this, God. And, Lord, I just ask that the, the body would be edified this morning because of this. In Jesus' beautiful name I pray. And everybody said amen, amen. I did forget to mention something. Um, Brother Walt was actually in this drama, too. Um, there was a spot, I don't know if anybody even noticed it, but it, it kind of looked like everybody just kind of sitting still for a second. It was because Brother Walt was actually doing that part. Um, he actually had to leave at the last second. He found out that his, da his dad's truck had uh, some manifesting of tentacle problems. So he had to take off and go get him because he was halfway to church and didn't want to leave his dad on the side of the road. A lot of us have been there, amen, where we turn around, we get somewhere, and all of a sudden we have to turn back around and go help somebody out real quick. And whenever daddy, you, you better get on the, on the, in the truck and be Johnny on the spot and go get him because daddy pays some of those bills <laughs> and you better get it done. Amen. Uh, but this morning I'm going to start off in Acts 27. It's a, uh, some of y'all might know this story, some might not, but uh, I want you to reach over and, and uh, just barely touch somebody and just say, sometimes it has to happen. Timothy, you got to say it to somebody, man. Thank you, sister. Um, but I want you all to know Paul's in the middle of a miracle that's about to be taking place, but he's also in the middle of a mistake that's being taken place. To make these things make no sense, two can be the same because you're really talking from your perspective of things. But Acts 27, 19 through 26. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither the sun nor the stars appeared for so many days, the storm continued raging. Ain't that how?
how it is sometimes? Have y'all ever been in a battle where the storm just it kept on and kept on and kept on and kept on? It just seemed like it wouldn't let up. It just kept on and kept on and kept on. Oof. <laughs> thank you, brother. Oh, my God. Thank you, brother. Okay. So the storm kept raging on, and, and, and we finally gave up all hope of being saved. These men on this, this ship had lost hope to us. They quit believing that they could be saved. But at the right time, they all began to lose their hope, and God spoke through Paul in a powerful way. It was a good thing that he was on this boat. Amen? After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up and before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice and not sailed to Crete. Then you would have been spared, and you would have spared this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up all of your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God to whom I belong to, who I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. In other words, you can't go down in this battle. I got another battle I got ahead that you're going to be in. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up the courage, man, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must go around on some islands. Touch your neighbor real quick and say, ain't you blessed that I'm here with you? Because here's the deal, y'all. Because Paul was in the situation, those men were saved. Because you're here, somebody could be saved. Ooh, that's deep. Because I'm here, somebody could be saved. Because you're here, I could be saved. I say this all the time to the youth. Every time we get in service, I always, well, when we get into a good deep worship service, I always tell them, when you go to the altar, you could be the thing that breaks somebody else to go. You could be the one that helps change. Because how many times have we sat in service and said, oh, it's Sister So-and-so, shakes that tambourine one more time, I'm going to the altar. Oh, if they sing through that choir, that chorus one more time, I'm going to the altar. I feel it. I feel it. But I just don't want to go yet. But if they hit that bridge one more time, I'm go- if they say that one word one more time, I'm going. <laughs> when I was younger, this is what I did. If Brother So-and-so, because I ain't looked at nobody behind me, if Brother So-and-so shows up in a red shirt, I know I got to go to the altar. I'd turn around and look, and of course, he's in a red shirt, so I'd have to go to the altar. But I'm telling you, sometimes the reason that you go through things is because you're helping someone else through that trial. Sometimes we face these storms because we're supposed to be facing them for somebody else. Mm. So this has to happen. Paul, Paul, as spiritual as he is, isn't above telling somebody, by the way, that I told you so. Because he literally sat there and said, "Um, men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Paul is is, as smug as I'll get out in this point because he is sitting here telling them, y'all should have listened to me. But none of y'all wanted to listen. So now we are here in this boat in the middle of this storm and got nothing we can do, and we're going to be thrown across. Mm. Some of us get in this place, uh, some of us in this place right now, Chris, we'll be sitting here and we'll be smug. We'll tell somebody real quick, like, man, you should have listened to me. Man, I'm, I'm telling you. Hey, am, am I preaching? Amen. Talia almost said amen right then. Paul warned the sailors that they were on the ship that shouldn't sail from Crete, but they did it anyway. Paul's only reason on being on this ship was because he was preaching the gospel. He didn't do anything wrong, but I want to make sure everybody understands this. You don't always go through terrible things because you did something wrong. Sometimes you go through situations because you did something right. I need to say that again. Okay. Sometimes you go through situations because you did something right. And you can't always know the reason, which is bad for me because I'm the type of person that I want to know why I'm going through this. Can I just be transparent this morning? Why did I just go through this? Why am I dealing with this? Why did I get this? Why am I having to face this? Why ain't they having to face this? Why do I have to deal with this? And see, I'm one of those that get caught up on the reason. Because I've always believed 
everything that we go through, God's trying to teach me something. Amen? Amen. Okay, I'll amen myself. Okay. Well, I'm telling you, I'm one of those people, anytime something bad happens, God, why are we going through this? Why are we going through this? Was there something I could have done to to prevent this, to stop this? Is there something that I could have done? And I don't know how many people, um, let me just ask this. Are you a trustworthy person? And are you an easily trusting person? When I say that, I mean not on yourself, but on other people. Do you trust other people quickly? See, some of y'all up in her. <laughs> I'm telling you. Some of y'all are getting real. Some of y'all, no. I mean, I'm trustworthy, but see, I'm the type of person that I trust you. Give me a reason not to trust you. That, that's, that's my, you know, strike two, strike three, all that kind of stuff. My wife says sometimes I have too many strikes because I'll do about ten strikes at a time. But she's also the exact opposite of me. When she walks into a situation, it's one and done. You mess with her, oh, it's over with after that. I love you, honey. I'll pray for you from a distance. You know what I'm saying? You be over there, and I'll be over here. I trust you to that extent, not over here. Uh huh. See, some of y'all, <laughs> I'm telling you now. But see, I'm, the, I'm, I'm kind of the opposite. I, I trust too much sometimes. And then there has to be a balance. Amen? There has to be a balance because man, I'm going to let y'all know. I know this is going to come. This is a very unpopular opinion, but I just really feel like I need to let, let y'all know this and address this this morning. I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm close, according to my wife, but I'm not perfect. Amen. My problem is right now is there's a lot of women in here laughing at me right now. And I think they're doing it because they're husbands. Anyway, um, I don't always take people at their word. Amen. Because I've heard before that they want a certain thing out of this relationship or out of this situation. But then you start seeing their motives, and then you start seeing them completely acting different when they get in the situation. Can I get an amen? How many of y'all have ever had to, or ever had a friend, somebody that just came up to me and said, hey, I want to be your friend. I want to be close to you. We need to go hang out. We need to do this. But something fell off. Because you're sitting here saying, what, what, what's really going on? Like, what, what they really want to be my friends with? We don't hang, we don't even, we're not in the same groups. We're not in, we don't go to school together. We don't go to work together. We don't go to church together. Why are they really wanting to be my friend? And see, sometimes that motive gets in our way. Sometimes all that kind of stuff pops up. But we also have had those situations when uh, you hear this girl say, I want a godly man. Ooh, I want a godly man, one that'll, that'll push me and that'll, that'll press me, making me better as a Christian, making me as a better Christian woman, will make me just so much closer to God. And then you see who she's dating. And you're sitting here saying, she's going to get you closer to God because you're going to be praying a lot. <laughs> Some of them youth over there are giggling a little too much right now because they know I'm stepping on their toes. I know. I ain't stupid, I know. And how many times have we heard a guy, a guy say, man, I just want a godly woman, one that's going to have my back, one gonna, that's going to push me and that's going to help me, one that's going to put the, uh, listen, listen now, listen now, we got mamas looking at sons right now. Okay, um, I better get off this topic. <laughs> but then you start seeing them in relationships and you start realizing that ain't what they wanted. That ain't what they're saying. Their, their actions ain't speaking what their words are saying. Their actions speak so much louder than words, amen. Hey, I can even go this way. You ever had somebody just, just love on you for no reason? Okay, I'll, I'll use this example. I'm very I'm very trusting person, but I'm very sketchy when it comes to my kids, okay? If Chloe comes in the living room like she did the other day after I got them those two packs of Oreos sitting in the house, I'm sitting there eating these Oreos. And thank y'all, yeah, one and a half boxes because Jaden left me a note saying I already opened this one and got half of them. Um, I'm being very serious. I have a picture of it and everything. Jaden left a note in my Oreo box saying, hey, I ate half of them. Thanks for sharing. Have y'all ever seen The Simpsons? I know most of y'all read the Bible, so y'all don't, don't watch TV and everything. But have y'all ever seen The Simpsons where Homer's about to choke out Bart? 
boy, in that instant, when I seen them Orioles missing, and then I seen that note from Jaden, <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, get back to what I was talking about. Uh, Chloe had came in there, and me and Candy are kind of sitting there. Candy had about four or five, and she's lying to me, saying she only had two. And I, I'm eating. I've already had about ten, and I'm starting on the second sleeve of it. And Chloe comes out there, and she goes, hey, Daddy. Automatically, Chloe never comes up and says, hey, Daddy. She never does that. She usually just comes in, hey, Father, or what you got going on today, or um, singing a song or something. Anyway, she walks in there, and she goes, hey, Daddy, um, I love you. And I was like, I love you, too. What do you want? <laughs> and she was like, can I get an Oreo? <laughs> and I said, you didn't come in here to tell me you love me. You came in here because you weren't an Oreo. And she said something to me that kind of stuck with me for a little bit. She said, why can't I be both? She grabbed her Oreo and walked out, or her two Oreos, and walked out. But it stuck with me. Why can't it be both? For me, I hear Paul, and he's putting up, uh, or he's being put on this ship as a prisoner for a crime that makes no sense. He's being accused of things that he didn't do. He was sitting here preaching the gospel when they were throwing stuff on him and letting him out. I hear two things. One is faith. This will happen. And two is frustration. It didn't have to happen. But I hear both of them. Acts 27, verse 21. If you don't mind throwing that up again. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you, have, you should have taken my advice to set, not sail for Crete. Then you would have been spared this damage and loss. In other words, for the reason we are about to wreck is you. You're the reason that I'm going through this. You're the reason that we're dealing with this. You're the reason why we're going through this storm. I told you not to do this, but we're doing it anyway. It's the decision that you make, but if we stay too long in the reason, we're going to drown. we stay too long worried about the reason that we're here, we're going to drown. There's things that we're supposed to get past because God ordained it, God set foot on it, God put the steps of a righteous man before us, so we're supposed to walk in that, but we're sitting here and we're stuck in the reason too many times saying, woe is me, why me? And God's sitting here trying to give us the path to get out of it, but we won't do it because we're so focused on the problem instead of focused on the problem solver. Sometimes we have to get past trying to figure out why it happened and the fact that it's very difficult and we need to learn how to trust God through the process. That's not something people like hearing because that talks about patience. And as a youth pastor, I can 100% tell you patience is not something that most of us have nowadays. When I was younger as a pastor, we had a family that uh, their youngest son had committed suicide. I was sitting there talking to the mother, and I kept feeling like I need to give her the reason why this happened. Because when you're in that situation, all you want to do is just con talk and con counsel them, but you want to comfort them. You want to be there for them. You, and the only thing that kept playing through my head was, I need to tell them, I need to tell them, I need to tell them. And finally, I got to realize in those chunk, chunky chunk verses, that kind of wasn't enough. What, what do you mean? Um, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. How is that going to help this man get out of this situation? Or Romans 8, 28. God is going to use this for the good. That mama don't want to hear that about her son. So you know what Ryan did as a young pastor too? Ryan went in there and hugged the woman, told her he loved her, told her, I've got you. Anything you need, I'm here for you. Hugged the dad, told him I loved him. Anything I can do, I'm here for you. I turned around and started doing this. Turned around and started doing the, the laundry thing. Turned around, took out the trash, 
called my wife and said, hey, come get some paper plates and paper cuts, bring them over to the house. Because they got about 50 people that's about to show up at their house. It wasn't the fact that I needed the word to say. I just needed to show them that I'm here for them. Because at the exact same moment, God was sitting there trying to say the exact same thing to them. You might not understand the reason behind it, but I'm here with you, walking with you through this. Do I know the reason that that little boy committed suicide? No, I don't. The mom and dad may never know. But it wasn't my job to sit here and tell them there's a reason that you're going through this. Because anybody that knows, that's ever been through anything, the last thing you need is somebody coming up to you, your kid coming up. The last thing you need is somebody coming up to you. Well, if you would just give your kid some more. I don't need that right now. My kid done flipped the buggy in the middle of Walmart and food's everywhere. I don't need that. right. I need you helping me pick it up and put it back in the buggy. Sometimes we need to learn how to keep our mouths shut. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. Did I just say that? I think I did. Sometimes we need to learn how to keep this quiet. And sometimes we need to let our hands and feet be the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes we need to just, just work it out. Help them as much as possible. But I will tell you. The number one weapon that we have in our arsenal that most people forget all the time, and it makes no sense to me as a Christian. How do we forget this so much? Prayer. The one thing, if you want to open your mouth, open your mouth to God. If you want to talk about it, talk to God. Man, I read something earlier that said something about, um, I can't remember what his name is. One of them old philosophers, I can't remember his name, said that uh, he had somebody come up to him and tell him that he wanted to share some gossip with him about one of his friends. And he said, well, there's a list of three things that I always make people go to if they're going to tell me something. Number one, is it true? Well, I don't know if it's true. Okay. Is Number two, is it beneficial to me? Is it going to help me out? Well, no, I don't think it's going to help you once you find out about all this. He said, okay, well, number three, um, if, it's, if it's not truthful and it's not beneficial to me, does it build him up? Well, no, it's a, once you hear it, it's going to be bad. The man looks at him and says, then why in the world do I want to hear a lie that you have no idea if it's the truth, that's not building him up or helping me? Why would I want to hear that? That's that's hatred. That's negativity. Why would I want to hear that? And it comes down to the fact of as human beings, our flesh wants to hear that message. We don't want to talk about this a lot, but our flesh likes hearing that message because, oh, man, you heard the latest gossip. You see people doing dances and everything doing that stuff. But then when you start realizing, what is this doing to me? How is if somebody told me something about uh, Brother Timothy, if somebody told me something bad about how is that helping him or how is that helping me? It's not. Sometimes we need to learn how to keep that quiet. Amen. That's why most people don't like sharing stuff with me because I'll either it'll die with me or I'll figure out if it's true or not. That's why a lot of people don't like talking to me about some of that stuff. I'm going to be honest with you. I love it. Because I don't get a lot of gossip. Amen. Woo. None of y'all said amen. Okay. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm at. Okay. But I realize sometimes people don't need a reason to be in the middle of the storm. They just need a reassurance that God will still love them and still have them in the midst of it. Amen. Sometimes all we need is that reassurance from God. Sometimes we just need to make sure that God is still in control. Amen. Now, I want you guys to understand this. This happens. It isn't because of the D word. It's the devil. The things that happen in your life, the storms, the trials, they don't always happen because of the devil. They happen because of the other D word, the decision. Because sometimes we make decisions and we think they're the devil trying to do stuff to us, but it was us that did it. Trying to. Have you ever gone through a storm because of someone else's decision? See, this is the awkward part in this message because if too many of y'all stay quiet and start looking at each other or if you start shouting amen too much, some wives are going to be mad and some husbands are going to be mad because you had to go through something because of somebody else's decision. The devil didn't make you do this. The The decision that you made made you go through this. That's the same with this boat. The decision to go this way, and now he's having to ride out the storm with them all. Because they made the decision to keep on going in. 
See, those are the hardest storms for us because to me personally, I'm one of those that have always looked at it, is this avoidable? Is this something that I could have avoided? Is there some way that I could get past this without having to deal with this? But it's inevitable. I just threw some Benji stuff up on you. It's, ine- it's inevitable. Because sometimes we have to go through those things. That's the tension that's in this room. I was talking to someone about something last, last year about this time. We were going through something, and, and we got in a deep conversation. And um, We were going through something that just it didn't make sense to either one of us at the time. But I said in a year from now, we're going to understand why this never happened. And he looked at me, and he asked me genuinely, he says, do you really believe that? I said, I fully believe that. I fully believe that God at one time will show us. And he said, no, 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 that's not what I'm asking. He said, do you fully believe that we had to go through this? You don't think there was a different way? See, he had been reverse engineering all these decisions and all these these points that led up to that point. And I looked at him, and what I kind of wanted to say, but wasn't wise enough at the time to say it. But in this moment, I am wise enough, and I can say this and give you kind of how I thought about it for about a year now. I've come to a place in my belief, and I've come to a place in my life that I don't try to figure out if God's hand is put in this or if it's the devil's hand that's put in this. And the reason is is because after so long I've realized it all passes through the same hand no matter what. All the the storms, all the trials, it still passes through God's hand. Because he he literally looked at me and said, I believe you're ready for this. I believe you can handle this. I want to test you. I want to push you. I want to try you. And see, some people don't like hearing that. Some people automatically, oh, that ain't ain't how my Jesus is. My Jesus, he, 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 he comes down and cooks breakfast for me. He ain't like that. I love you, but God is going to test you because I'm going to be honest with you. Pray for patience to be a part of this. Not, anybody want to answer that one? No, nobody wants, nobody want to, nobody wants to talk about that one? Okay. <laughs> it's not the fact that he's trying to test you in it. He's, he's helping you. He's putting you through a trial to endure it. Amen. Joseph, at the end of his life, could have looked at his brother you know, the one with many colors, the one that says many things. He could have looked at all of his brothers at the end of his life and said to death with every one of them. But he looked at his brothers and, and, and you know, I'm putting it in Ryan's terms real quick. He said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Because what you meant for evil, God used for good. Because now the famine that we should be dying from was last year. And now we're on the other side of this famine. God used it for the good. And I've heard it so many times, well, Pastor Ryan, is this good or is this evil? Why can't it be both of them? And I'm not talking about that gray area that's wrong, maybe it's right. I'm not talking about that. What the enemy meant for evil in your life, God can use for good. We just have to make sure that we pay attention to it. We have to see the perspective of God. Woo. Paul was saying it didn't have to happen. He said we could have been avoided this. Some of y'all are, I can, I'm going to preach to you teenagers right now. Some of y'all are like, oh, man. Your mama told you not to say that, y'all. Mm. See, your mama seemed to crave you that whole two months. But you wouldn't listen to him. So now you're stuck in the reason and you're missing the revelation of being out of it. I got a few of them that won't say a word to me now. They ain't even looking at me. But we must understand that sometimes we have to go through these storms because there's a revelation on the other side of this. Am I losing y'all? Yeah, some of y'all can, yeah, okay. Um, Revelation, the meaning of revelation, it's it's surprise and a previously... uh, being surprised at a previously unknown fact. That's what a revelation is. So don't 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 think it's some high and mighty thing. Yes, revelation is an awesome book of the Bible. Yes, if you haven't studied it, you need to. Um, 
it's a it's an awesome book in the Bible. It's not Revelations, it's Revelation. Make sure you remember that because it's one revelation that God's trying to show us. But regardless of all that, I really want to make sure you understand sometimes we sit here and we look at Revelation, the book in the Bible, and we get scared. Most Christians, this is a weird study, by the way, but most Christians, they did a study on it a couple of years back, and it was over 82% of the Christians will not read the book of Revelation. This makes no sense to me whatsoever. Because the book of Revelation is poetry. The book of Revelation was to empower us, to give us an understanding. Some people just don't like reading the Bible, I guess. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that either. Um, God's literally trying to teach us something through these storms. But even look at Lazarus. Uh, throw up John 11, 14 through 15 for me. Even Lazarus, when Lazarus died, when they told Jesus, do you know what he did? It blew my mind when I first read it. Then Jesus, <laughs> dear Lord, help me, God. I've been hanging around my wife way too much. <laughs> then Jesus, then Jesus said unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Next verse. This is Jesus talking. And he says, and I am glad for your sake that I was not there. Jesus is literally telling these people, I'm glad that Lazarus passed away and that I wasn't there for it. This is what's going to blow your mind. It was because up until this point, they only knew Jesus as a healer. This revelation is about to show them that Jesus is also the resurrection. God's putting you through certain things because you know this about him, but he's trying to show you this about him. And so many times we miss it because we're so stuck in the reason of what we're going through. We don't realize that God's trying to show us and reveal to us something else about him. There's angels that circle his throne constantly saying new things about him. And little old Ryan Clem from Humpty Bump, Pelham, Georgia, thinks he knows everything about God. No, he does not. I'm telling you now, the more you read this Bible, the more you realize you don't know anything. It teaches you. And I, I listen, I, I'm a youth pastor at heart. I'm a music minister at heart. I, I'm a pastor, whatever. I'm a Christian. Every time I read that Bible, I've read one verse 15 different times throughout my life. And every single time I've read it, it says something different to me. It's because the revelations that I've already been revealed to before, now God is trying to show me something new the next time I read it. How did you read Jesus wept and read something 15 times differently? It, that wasn't the verse I read, by the way, just making sure y'all knew. But Jesus wept. There's so many ways you can actually look at that verse. Was he sad because of what he went through? Was he happy because of what he was going on? Was he being joyful and he had tears of joy? There's so many different ways to look at it. Because I'm going to tell you now, when your friend passes away, Lazarus was Jesus' friend, amen? Anybody that knows and knows Lazarus and Jesus were friends. Jesus, most people would, rec would, would recognize automatically and realize automatically, Jesus is about to be emotional about this because that was a close friend of him. But instead of crying about it, he sat there and said, I'm glad for your sake that this happened. Sometimes we have to go through these storms. Sometimes we have to go through these battles because he wants to make sure that we understand the revelation that's coming forward. I'm glad that I've went through this stuff. I'm glad that I was I was wrong and I, and I realized I was wrong and, and relied everything on Christ instead of relying on, on Ryan. Amen? When you get in the storm, stop looking at the reason so much and start looking at the revelation that's behind it. How many need to know that he's the healer still to this day? How many need to know that he's the salvation still to this day? How many need to know that he is the resurrection now to this day? And how many times do we screw up and we mess up and we, we think we, can we just be real? We put God in a box sometimes. I've heard so many people do this, and, and I've seen this so much in my life. People put God in a box, Jesus in a, God, a box, Holy Spirit in a box, and they sit here and they allow it to be, what's the best word? A genie. 
I only need you on Sunday. Let me rub the lamp a little bit and see if you'll come out. I only need you on Sunday morning during service, so that way everybody thinks I'm holy and anointed. Let me rub that box a little bit just to see if you'd come out. And Oh, I got the goosebumps. I love y'all, but my God's more than just a feeling. My God is more than just goosebumps that pop up every once in a while. Because, and I think it was Pastor that said it last week, the same goosebumps that he gets from God in service, sometimes he gets it when he's sitting here watching Georgia football. Sometimes he gets it when he's sitting here and he sees that deer walk out on a cold morning. It's the same goosebumps. Oh, no, it's not. My goosebumps ain't, oh, I love you. But goosebumps are goosebumps. You know what I'm saying? It, it's a chilled factor. Man, my God is bigger than that. My God has delivered me from more than that. And these storms that we might be sitting in right now, God's going to deliver us from those too. But it's our decision, not the devil, our decision that helps us get through this. Amen? Y'all are going to laugh and laugh and laugh. I'm done. This is my message. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, since since my message is done, I need a I need a bunch of help back there to clean up the tables and chairs. No, I'm playing. <laughs> Everyone, I got y'all out 15 minutes early because we're gonna go do this. No, but I'm gonna get Chloe to come up and play something. But I do want us to do this youth pastor thing that I do all the time. Yeah, can can y'all say it for me? Yeah, close your heads, bow your eyes for me real quick. This morning, I I, I truly do want to ask you this. With nobody looking around, because I don't want anybody embarrassed and all that kind of stuff. But first off, I am going to ask this. If you got something from this message today, would you just lift your hand up real quick? Well, hallelujah, praise God. I love that. Thank God. It was an on-time word. Amen. You can put them down. Thank you. Well, the next question I'm going to ask, because we're ahead of time, so you ain't got to stress about lunch. You ain't got to stress about all that stuff. Since we're so far ahead of time, this morning, can we, can we lay some things down at the altar? This morning, can we worship God just for a little bit? If you've got something that you've been going through, a storm that's been constantly battling you and hitting you and hitting you and hitting you, and it just don't seem like it's letting up, and you've been stuck in the reason instead of the, the revelation, just simply lift your hand, just, just lift it up. Father God, right now, every person that's got their hand lifted, every person that's got their hand raised right now, Lord, I just ask for revelation to come across right now. God, I ask right now that the reason would be just the reason to be left alone, but God, that your revelation would take place right now. God, we declare healing in this place for spiritual wounds. We, we declare healing for physical wounds, God. We declare your presence, your blood, your power on every one of these situations. God, right now, move across this place. There's a song that's being sung from hearts right now. There's a healing taking place. God, forgive me for being stuck in the reason for so long. God, I know I've been hurt. I know I've been stuck. I, I know I've been just overwhelmed. But Lord, help me with this reason. I know it's not easy. I know it's, it's something I'm going to have to have you walk me through. But God, help me as we get through this. Help me, God, put your hand out and carry me at times. God, lead me down this path. God, God, set and ordain the steps of that righteous man, that righteous woman before me, and help me get through this and see the revelation that you have for me on the other side of this storm. God, I thank you for what you're about to do. I have no idea why I'm even doing this. But God just spoke. If you're in here and you have a loved one that you have been praying for, I don't know what the deal is with this, but if you've been praying for and praying for and praying for, but it seems like every time you pray about it, it's just another wall that keeps coming up. It seems like it's 
for their battle. Every time you invite them, every time you try to pray with them, every time you try to talk to them, it seems like another wall just keeps popping right back up. And it just seems like there's a block that just won't come down, that won't move, that won't separate, that won't get out the way. With nobody looking around, if, if that's you, can you please raise your hand? I'm going to do something bold. If that's you and you don't mind, would you come to the front real quick? Because I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you right now. 